Hey everybody, it's Mama to Wife One. Have you missed me? I know it's been a really long time since I've posted a video and I deeply, deeply apologize. I still owe you guys the last Bridgerton video from season three. We only on season three? That can't be right. We are on season three. That's that's weird. And also owe you guys a health update, but I have a couple more appointments coming up, so that's why I've been holding off on that. But I wanted to talk to you guys about something I'm passionate about, which are documentaries. I am a sucker for really good doc. I don't like the fact that a lot of documentaries now are docu-series. I don't like stuff being broken up into three or four episodes. So just give me one documentary that's like an hour and a half long and we can be in business. So the one for today that I'm going to talk about is called Gary. It is on Peacock and it is about the late actor Gary Coleman. Now, before I start with my not review necessarily, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the documentary is about. But I'm really going to talk about the four things I learned from the documentary. Before we do that, Hi, I'm Mama Toy for One. If you've never clicked on my video before, welcome to my channel. If you have, guys, I missed you guys so very much. But again, if you haven't, feel free to go through my channel and look at some of the other things that I've talked about. There's stuff on there about Bridgerton, about Married at First Sight, I talk about my health, I talk about my kids, I try to talk about whatever is important to me at the moment. And right now, it's just watching good old documentaries because I just love that. I like, I like watching those. I'm not really a big fan of watching the news, but I like watching documentaries. I do like that real life. I, I like that thing to be real life. And so I'm going to talk about it. But before I do, make sure you like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel when you guys get a chance. Really appreciate it. And definitely comment below if there's some documentaries out there that you think I should check out. I have Hulu. I have Netflix. I have, what else do I have? I have Peacock. I have Prime. So if there are any really good documentaries that you guys like that you think I should watch on any of those streaming platforms, definitely let me know because that's really my jam. So without further ado, let's talk about Gary. Now, Gary is about, again, the actor Gary Coleman. For those of you who are younger, you may not know who that is. Even for my generation, he was basically known for being the star of this show called Different Strokes. Different Strokes came out, I want to say maybe I was alive. I was born in the 81s. I feel like Different Strokes was probably on the air, but it wasn't really for my generation. I'll say that much. Now, some people, if you grew up with grandmothers and you spent time over there, you probably split your time between watching the stories and maybe watching stuff like Different Strokes, Good Times, Facts of Life. I wasn't really on any of that stuff. I just, you know, that stuff came out in the 80s. So in the 80s, I'm a little kid. I'm watching cartoons. Didn't really watch that stuff. But regardless, he was a little person. He was very funny. And again, he was the star of the show. So the documentary is about him and his life. He died, I want to say, in 2010. So it's actually been a little minute since he passed away. And so the documentary talks about how he got into the business. It talks about some of the struggles that he had while he was on the show. Not necessarily with, well, some of the struggles that he had. He's growing up on the show, even though his body isn't getting taller. He's getting older on the show. They're really, all the, the, material that they give him for that character kind of still remains in the same age. So he's a little frustrated with the fact that he wasn't growing with the show. And then his parents, I believe, were his managers at the time. And there was a lot of talk about them being a little hard to work with, kind of being deep in his pockets, not really getting the money that he was supposed to have gotten. And the documentary, it actually has both of his parents who are still alive. They're featured in the documentary, along with the woman who was his ex-wife. I believe he was only married this one time to this particular woman. She's heavily in the documentary, along with a friend, like just past people that he's worked with. So it talks about his childhood, talks about the issues he had with his parents because he ended up suing them for some money that they supposedly took from him. And that whole part of the documentary was so interesting and it was so, it's from a mother standpoint, now, obviously, I my children are not in show business. They're not making millions of dollars. So I want to believe that I wouldn't do the things that they were accused of. I also fully think that they did it. Just the way they kind of came off in the documentary, they definitely still maintain that they did nothing wrong. But I, I kind of believe that they did what he accused them of doing. Honestly, I just do. And then it talks about the struggles of being a child actor when you're off the show and trying to get bigger roles or trying to maintain your stardom and maintain, you know, your resume, especially for someone like him, who again was, he was only four, eight and was never going to get tall in four, eight. Everyone's going to see him as this child for the rest of his life, even though his voice is deeper and he's really a grown man. 
So that struggle, he had legal issues that talked about his wife and how a lot of people didn't like her. And it was just a lot and leading up to his death. So a couple of things I'll say before I talk about the things that I learned. One thing I gauged for me personally, there were accusations thrown about, again, the parents, about the wife or ex-wife and about a couple of people in his life. The way I look at it is watching the documentary, the people who were still so moved by his life and moved by his death that they were brought to tears. Those are the ones that are genuine to me. His parents never shed a tear. The wife in here never shed a tear. And they may be like, oh yeah, it was really sad when he died. And yeah, I can't believe it. It's still tough. It's like, mm, I know it's been a long time that he's gone. It's been 14 years now. But talk, this is the first documentary that I know of, an in-depth documentary that's been about his life. So to revisit all of those things, revisit all of those memories, I feel like I'd be moved in some way to be like, and I can't believe this and I remember this or whatever. So a few people in there who got really choked up and I could tell from those three people that they genuinely loved him for who he was, not for what he could financially provide for them. So I didn't really care for the wife at all, didn't care for the parents. You know, it's hard, not hard, but you see documentaries or you hear stories about these child actors and actresses and even just child stars, period. And it's so easy for them to be taken advantage of because they don't know anything unless you come from a background of parents or family members who have been in this business for a minute who can give you that good advice. You don't know what you're doing. And it's very easy for people to prey on you, specifically talent scouts and agents and managers and financial advisors and all that stuff. So it was a lot of really interesting information. And I did really enjoy the documentary. Here are the four things that I learned, though, from watching Gary. Number one, I guess she's in no particular order, but regardless, we'll say number one. If you are in that position that Gary Coleman was in, write stuff down. Write stuff down. Keep track of everything that you're going through. Have your evidence. Have your receipts. And I only say this because he is not here anymore. He didn't write a memoir, as far as I know. They didn't mention it before he passed on, which means that the people who are left here are the ones who are left to tell your story. Who knows what kind of spend they're going to take on things? Who knows what kind of words they're going to put in your mouth? And without actually, and there were a couple of times where we heard actual physical recordings from him, but I feel like that didn't happen a lot. They took a couple of snippets from actual interviews. And then again, just like from voicemails, he left people, but it really wasn't enough of his actual voice. So all we're hearing is the opinions of people. And I'm sure after all this time has passed, some of their opinions or what they consider fact has been a little... It's been affected by time, right? And affected by, you don't want to make yourself look bad in the documentary. So you may say some things to make yourself look like the victim and make Gary look like the villain. So whether in that position or not, write stuff down. Keep a journal. Keep something where you're writing down your own thoughts and your own, not rendition, but I guess rendition of what you believe is taking place. Because if not, you have all these people speaking on your behalf and who knows how they're going to paint you. And he is he's dead and gone now. So he can't even defend himself from some of the things that people say, which sucks. Number two, family is not determined by blood. And I feel like the older you get, the more you're able to really understand that and really able to believe that in your spirit. And I'm not saying this is true for everybody. Like some people, their family, their biological family is the people who are absolutely close to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not even making it seem like I'm not close to my family close to my family. I'm not close with all of them, but I have a great relationship with my family. There's nobody I'm beefing with, nobody I haven't talked to in 25, 30 years. I'm cool with my family, but the people that I consider my road dogs, my ace bone cones, my actual sisters and my brothers, have, I share no blood with them at all, but they are way closer to me than most of the people in my family. And that's not a bad thing. It's just the way it is. And I think what's important is that you have people in your circle that you can rely on, depend on, who will call you on yourself and who will love you unconditionally. And if those people don't share blood with you, that's fine. If they do share blood with you, that's fine. Gary seemed like he had at least three really good friends that loved him, that were there for him, that supported him. Those are the only two people in the documentary that I saw actually shed a tear when they were talking about Gary Coleman's life. And I just fully, firmly believe that they actually had a mutual relationship with him. I really sense that. Another thing is, it's never too late to establish your boundaries. Sometimes when we are younger, 
we can't see how people are taking advantage of us. We can't see how people may be preying on our own vulnerabilities. We may not even understand where our actual vulnerabilities are. As you get older, you start to have a better sense of who you are, what you like, what you don't like, what you're willing to take, what you're not willing to take. All of that stuff changes over time. And unfortunately, when people get so used to preying on you, as soon as you start establishing boundaries, well, how are you going to change? I don't understand. Why are you doing this? Da, da, da. Everyone can't handle that. And the people who cannot handle it are the people who have benefited the most from stomping on you in some way. Even if you didn't realize what they were doing, they obviously benefit the most because now they can't tolerate the fact that, oh, now you're establishing boundaries. And boundaries don't even have to be something, I don't say concrete. They don't have to be something that's really big, right? A boundary for me could be maybe when I was younger, I let some people talk to me any type of way. Or I always answer the phone no matter what time, day or night because people need me. A boundary now could be, you know what? I want to be with my family. I'm not going to answer the phone after 9 p.m. It could be something simple like that. And you don't even have to tell people to establish these boundaries. Just start acting, changing your behavior a little bit. They'll get the hint and they'll either get on board or they'll throw a little hissy fit. They throw a hissy fit like, okay, well, this is what it is. Now play if you don't like it, then roll. And just kind of leave it at that. But it's never too late to establish that boundaries with your loved ones, with your lover, with your children, with anybody in your life, really. I mean, even with like your boss. I mean, obviously your boss still has the final say-so with stuff, but there could be some boundaries that you establish like, hey, I'm not comfortable doing this particular thing unless I have the proper training, or I'm seeking the proper training for this. So I would like in the future to make this a part of my job description or whatever it is. But boundaries are very, very important. And with Gary, I'm sure that was really hard to do when it came to his parents and he felt very betrayed by his parents when it came to financial peace. He had to establish that boundary of taking them to court to get what he wanted. And I think, you know, their relationship never recovered. That They never give any indication that he actually continued to talk to them after that. You know, I don't know. And the parents didn't necessarily indicate that he did either. So that was a boundary he had to establish. Now, was that necessarily a good boundary? For him, it might have been. For someone else, it could be like, well, how dare you cut off your parents? It's like, but if my parents aren't there for me, yes, they gave me life. Yes, they raised me. But now I'm a grown person. And now as a parent, especially if you guys are not parents out there, this is very key. You cannot parent your child the same way when they were five that you can do when they're 35. You have to adjust the way you parent that person. Like you just have to. And if your parents aren't willing to make that adjustment and they still want to treat you like you're a kid, treat you like you don't know anything and treat you like they can take over and they can control everything, then you got to let them know that's not going to work. And if you're establishing those boundaries with them and they're not down with it, then guess what? You may have to cut mommy and daddy off. Hopefully not forever, but you got to do what's best for your own self, for your own self-preservation, for your own inner peace, for your own happiness. And the last thing, and this for me, I thought was the most important, one of the most important things. People will do anything for love. And what I mean by that is if you feel in some way like you have not been, you have not been receiving the love that you desperately need, or like in Gary's case, the people that you love the most were your parents. You felt betrayed by these parents that you never thought would betray you. And that love that you're no longer getting from these people who are supposed to love you unconditionally, now you're looking for ways to fill that void of who is going to love me. He had friends and the friends were great. And then he met this woman, decided to marry her, and he wanted that love. And he did whatever he could to maintain this love that he felt for her. Even though when he met her, she was 19. And I'm not sure how old he was, but I know it wasn't 19. But... (sighs) Love, love is great, right? I love people, love my husband, love my babies, love my parents, blah, 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 blah. But love, especially when you're young, and especially when you don't, when you have not had that kind of love ever in your life or just in a really long time, it can make you super, super blind to what's happening around you because you want to believe with all your heart that this is it. This is what I've been waiting for, asking for, praying for. This is what I deserve. I finally have this love that I've said that I've wanted all my life. I've had this void. I've had nobody to fill that void. Now somebody's there that's going to love me. Never mind the fact that they're possibly a gold digger. Never mind the fact that they are 
mentally abusive. Never mind the fact that they're physically abusive. All that stuff is irrelevant. This is what I have to put up with in order to receive this love. Not realizing that being that blind to stuff, it makes you have a warped idea of what love looks like. And love looks different for everybody, I'm sure. But if you love, if you're that desperate for love, you're willing to accept anything from anybody. And it's not a safe situation to be in. It's not a healthy situation to be in. And if you really crave love that much that you're willing to kind of take anything, it's just, it's lonely. And who, and I feel like that's probably one of the worst things. Not everybody who was alone is lonely. I feel like it's much worse to be in a relationship and still be lonely than it is to just be single. Because again, you can be single and not necessarily be lonely. You can still have a very fulfilling life and be a-okay. But if you are in a relationship and a marriage and you still feel 100% alone and you're not feeling the love you thought you needed, that is such a miserable existence. And yeah, I mean, those are the things that I learned about his life and just that the kind of takeaways that I got from his documentary. But it was a good documentary. I did enjoy it. It's a sad life that he led, but I recommend you guys watch it. Again, it's on Peacock and it's called Gary. It just came out this year. I don't think it's been out too terribly long, but definitely check it out. And when you check it out, comment below what you guys thought of it. Are you even familiar with Gary Coleman? Were you familiar with any of his work before watching the documentary? What other documentary should I be watching? I did watch the one on Lacey Peterson on Netflix. That one was, it was a little tough to watch. That's a docu-series with three episodes. It was it's a little tough. And I also watched the one on Air McNair on Netflix. I did not like it at all. I thought it was very, it wasn't complete. So I wasn't really a fan of that. But definitely comment below what documentaries you want me to watch. Make sure again that you like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.